So recently I went back through the business plan that I wrote when I first decided to quit my full-time job and start my own business. And I thought it could be a fun little exercise for us to actually go back through and see what I implemented that actually really helped out and was crucial in starting the business and what basically I wrote down that I thought would be important heading into my own business that really wasn't. It's my hope that by watching this video, maybe if you're thinking about starting your own business, this might give you the confidence to actually, I suppose, take that first step into at least planning your business and then maybe even the biggest step into quitting your job to go and realize what it is that you wanna do. So the first item on my business plan was actually to complete a film school course which I was doing online. When you decide to go out and start your own business, the first thing that you need to do is actually get your skill level up to at least the same level as your competition so you can compete in the marketplace. So for me, I wanted to take this online course to try and polish some of the weaker areas in my skill set so that I felt that I could compete more effectively in the marketplace before actually going and quitting my job. Next on the list was create sample work. Now. It's all well and good for me to go out and say to my potential clients, I'm the right guy for the job, but unless I can actually demonstrate that and back that up by showing them some sample work, they're just gonna have to take my word for it. Most people are not gonna be comfortable leaving their current supplier unless they can see the actual advantage firsthand. So what I actually did was I went out and I approached the potential clients that I had and basically said to them, look, I'm willing to do this video for you for free just to demonstrate my skill. Now, most people, you know, if they're gonna get a free video, they're like, okay, I'll give you a shot. It's not costing them anything and they're getting something out of it. So it's giving them value without asking for really anything in return other than just simply their time. And then once I was able to create those examples for them, they could see how the quality of work was different to what my competition was doing in the marketplace and therefore they were more comfortable switching over to myself. So you need to actually be able to create the product that you wanna to sell to the end user in order to show them that it's actually going to benefit them firsthand. Work out a client chase list. So before I quit my job, before I even contemplated quitting my job, the first thing I wanted to do was write out a list of everyone who could be a potential client for me. So that way when I actually took the step and created the business, I could not waste any time and straight away start chasing down those potential clients that I thought would fit within my business model. Work out a pricing list for your products. Now this is something I did totally wrong, to be totally honest. I had all these ideas of, I wanna create this type of video and that type of video, and my business is all around video production. So I had about eight or nine ideas for these different types of videos. These were all just concepts in my mind. They weren't actual physical products that I'd already made. That made it quite challenging for me to actually know what to price things at. So what I ended up doing was actually culling that down to my three base videos and having a set price for them. So that way I had something to send out to my clients. And then once I had those clients all using those three base products, I would say, what about this? I've got this idea we would go and create that and I would do that at a discounted rate because I was, for all intents and purposes, practicing on the client to try and develop this product and create this thing. And then once I had the concept down and I knew how much time, energy and effort would go into it, then I knew where to price that product. Understanding how many videos I needed to create to survive. So one of the crucial parts of my business plan was actually working out, well, I've got all these financial commitments that I've already got in life, so I need to still be able to fulfill these obligations when I go out and start my own business. Now, how do I get confidence around being able to do that? Well, I work out what is my bare minimum that I need to survive. And for me, I worked out that if I could at least do five videos a week at $300, then I could pay my bill. And then it was a case of, well, am I confident that I can actually go and get that work? Yes, I was. Okay, well, is there room within the marketplace to charge, in my example, more than $300 per video? And again, the answer is yes. Do we have extra time in the week? Is five videos $300 going to take up every ounce of time that I have during the week? Again, no. So all of a sudden I realized, well, okay, if I can actually get the clients, there is more room to push it past my survival point. So all of a sudden I'm starting to think, okay, so there's some room to grow profit within the business. 
Next up, I had working out the numbers to actually hire and start building out a team within the company. Now, this is probably something I didn't need to work out straight away if I'm being totally honest looking back in hindsight. I could have very much just worked out as a sole trader, just a one-man band, what are my numbers? And that would have been simple enough to get the business up and running. And then from there, you can really work out how you're gonna hire staff, how much it costs to hire staff, where the room is for expansion within the business. But for me, I wanted to, I kind of overanalyze everything in life. So I wanted to work out, well, how much am I gonna to have to pay an assistant? How's that gonna benefit the business? And how can I grow it? Is the initial videos that I'm charging high enough to then all of a sudden bring on this person to help me grow the business? As you guys have seen, if you've been following the channel for a while now, Chris has actually joined my business and he's helping out with editing and the occasional overflow filming when I have double bookings. Sometimes I'm filming auctions, they're both on at the same time. Now to work out actually how to hire the person, you need to work out, well, how much is it gonna cost me at least on a daily rate to begin with if you start them as casual to bring this person into the business and then how much am I charging per video? How many extra videos can we get done with this person? And then does it make sense to expand and actually put that person on? But for the start, I wouldn't really worry about that. I would just basically get up and running as a one man band and then you can work it out from there. Get a safety net of $30,000 in the bank. Now this was a big target for me because as I mentioned before, I had financial commitments, I already had mortgages, so I had these obligations that I still had to fulfill whether my business succeeded or it didn't. So how am I gonna actually give myself confidence so I'm not up all night stressing, worrying about is this business gonna succeed? When is the next pay coming in? I decided to actually save $30,000, put it in the bank so it really didn't matter whether I was getting paid in my first couple of months because I had this money sitting there that could pay my mortgages while I actually got things up and running, got the clients, created the free videos. It took a lot of pressure off and that's what I would say is always try and keep a nest egg. Even if you're not starting a business, just keeping a nest egg gives you peace of mind and helps you sleep at night knowing that you don't have to look for that next paycheck. Register the business name. Now this was the last thing on the list that I had for creating my own business and I did it and the rest is history. I found that by actually stepping out of my comfort zone, creating my own business, I've found fulfillment every day. I don't wake up feeling like I don't wanna to go to work all those things that I have felt for so many years, working for other people. Now I feel that rather than trying to realize someone else's aspirations and goals, I'm really chasing my own. And that has, I feel like, helped me develop a lot as an individual. And I just feel like there's a lot of opportunity out there for me that I previously didn't see. And my hope is that by creating this video, that can maybe do the same for you. Maybe you can go out and start your own business, or maybe this is even just the first step in maybe considering what your other options are and how to work out you know, what you need to do and what order you need to do it in. But uh, I hope that this inspired you to go and chase your own ambitions. And if you wanna see more videos like this about me creating my first business and basically doing it from the point of view of how you can do the same, leave a comment down below and let me know if you enjoy this type of video. And I'll see you guys on the next one.